environment. A positive learning environment is when students feel heard, where they feel seen, where they feel valued. And what is a positive learning environment associated with? Well, this research has showed us it's associated with learning in your course, maybe staying in the major, staying at the university. So we all strive to do this. We all strive to do this all year long. We're all here because we really care and we wanna have a positive environment where our students are learning and engaged and motivated. Um, and this is the time that we're doing this. So what we're gonna share with you today is the work that we did where we asked our students their perceptions and their feedback of what we're doing well and where we can improve a bit. So Ali's gonna talk sure. about the context and big picture. Perfect, okay. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the context and why we, or what led us up to these activities that we're proposing. So a little bit about our Department of Health Studies. So we have currently about 230 majors, um, students in our major. Um, and for the faculty who teach specifically in our undergraduate major, either in public health or health promotion, is about 15 to 16 core faculty. And then we have another 15 adjunct faculty that help teach those core classes as well. So last, last year, um, we had a bit of a transition that happened where the director of undergrad programs and the director of the three-year scholars program switched. And I think both the director of uh, the three-year program and my change, we started to hear, maybe because we had a different hat on, we were hearing different types of informal student feedback about the courses that we were teaching um, that are taught in our department. So both Celeste and I had received some informal feedback from students and then more formal feedback as well. So Celeste and I um, discussed with the leadership team, which is made up of the chair, um, the associate chair, um, the two director roles, and we also have someone who's working really closely with our reaccreditation that we're doing right now too. And we started to discuss this feedback that we were getting from students. Um, we also received um, feedback from another faculty member who actually teaches a capstone for our health promotion majors. Melissa and I teach the capstone for our public health majors. So we just thought this is a really great opportunity to start um, soliciting student feedback in an environment that is open to it, right? Um, because students are already interested in sharing this feedback. And of course, we know that when students come with feedback, we want to receive it, and we also want to make sure we're doing something about it, right? I think it can be really detrimental to students when they share it and they don't see change that happens. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well, too. So as a leadership team, we decided that let's go ahead and meet with our um, capstone courses. So both Melissa and I teach um, the two courses in public health, and then... Um, we have another faculty member who teaches um, a capstone course, like I mentioned, for health promotion. So in order to gather this feedback, um, we did different separate activities, and Melissa will probably um, share more of that too, or do you want me to share more yeah, of that? I'll do that in a minute. Okay, perfect. Um, so one thing I do want to say about the sharing of the student feedback is, you know, I think as faculty, we wanted to do it in a way that made sense for our classroom. And I know, and I'll just speak on the way that I did it was, um, and Melissa will show you some images as well, but I wanted it to be more um, tactile where they're using sticky notes and they're talking as a small group and then sharing it out to the larger group. And I think this worked well in the space because of the capstone environment where they're all upperclassmen, which I didn't mention. Um, they're mostly graduating seniors. And they were already working in core groups because they're working with a community partner. And because in a previous class, we had it had informally come up in class about practices that were happening in the classroom, both in our major, within the university that students had been sharing with. So um, in that core, in that class, I told them the class before it that we were going to be talking about teaching practices. And I wanted them to, you know, come to this space if they felt like they were open to it. Um, and they were open to it, which is wonderful. So, um, and um, Melissa will talk a little bit about that too. So a little bit about creating that space for open and honest student dialogue. Um, I was thinking more about this too prior to this presentation. And, and I think a lot of this um, might resonate with you all too, 
is that I think we often talk about using the syllabus as a way to put all of our information in the course. So a lot of times when we're talking about honest and communication, honest um, and open and honest student dialogue and communication, we'll say, well, you know, in our syllabus, we stay that you can come to me with concerns. But thinking more about that, you know, it's not enough. We have to model it in the classroom as well. And I was thinking about one way that I do it, and I'm not saying it's the right way, but one way that I do it very early on in the semester is I actually provide them an example of when I have done something that didn't work. Um, and then I talk to them about how someone's came to me in the classroom about it, and then what I did to change it. So I think just modeling that and showing how you reacted to the information, right? I wasn't defensive. And then how I close the loop about changing the practice, um, I think shows them, okay, it does seem like she will actually receive this. I also share examples of when it has happened in the workplace. So not just in the classroom, but in other contexts as well. You know, I think there's a part of it, of that vulnerability in you that you're thinking, oh, they're going to see that I messed up. They're not going to see me as this expert. They're going to see that I don't always know all the right things. And I think in early on in my teaching career, I felt more self-conscious of that. But I think now I feel maybe less self-conscious of that because I don't feel like this young faculty member who has to be taken seriously, but instead I see the vulnerability as them taking me seriously. So I would just wanted to share that because I thought, um, I think that is what might resonate with other um, faculty and staff in the uh, room as well. And then the last part I also want to mention, and I alluded to, is just closing the loop. So once students shared this information, I then told them what we were going to do with it. But these were the next steps. We shared it with the leadership team. We then are going to share it to the larger faculty in our faculty retreat. And their biggest question was, where are you going for this retreat? And I said, in a classroom. <laughs> and they were like, what? You're not going someplace? I said, no, we don't use the word retreat that we're going on a vacation. So that was like their biggest concern. But I think closing that loop, like I said, shows them, okay, we're not just asking you and taking information from you, but this is actually what we're going to do with it. Um, and I think that just helps them say, okay, I see that you hear me. I see that you're going to do something about it um, so that you can close that loop. Yeah, so just a little bit more on the process that um, Allie mentioned. So this was a two-part process for us with students and student engagement and then with our full faculty, as, as Allie said. So with our students, we engaged all of our graduating seniors in the health promotion and public health major in the senior capstone class. So this was three classes. This was 49 students, and they provided feedback to us on positive and detrimental classroom practices in our department, as well as across the university. This was anonymous, and it was important that this was anonymous. Um, we thought that students might feel more comfortable sharing a more you know, honest and frank um, assessment of their experiences, maybe a more accurate picture. We also do solicit a, a lot of feedback from our students for accreditation. Our public health program is accredited, so we have more formal surveys where we're collecting data on the curriculum. We collect data from our alumni, but this was a really um, a rich opportunity to have more qualitative descriptive feedback. And then for our analysis, we did it old school. We coded um, the post-it notes and the feedback that students provided for, uh, to us in key themes. We looked for patterns across the student feedback. We really started to organize those comments um, around common themes to get a sense of how many students aligned with them. A lot of them really um, categorized into to groups naturally. And that some of them could go into pro or detrimental, which you'll see when you, um, when you, when you have your turn to look over these comments. Um, we paid special attention to actionable suggestions. So where we could really, to Ali's point, where we could really come back to the students and the faculty and come up with actionable ideas and strategies. Um, for example, you know, office hours that are only by appointment or where I can't um, reach faculty members online and in person. So these were ones that we paid special attention to that were actionable. Um, a few comments were unrelated to teaching and learning, so we sort of separated those out. 
And then, um, you know, just a note that this was really summative feedback. So in the CTRL sessions that we've all attended, you know, we really value, you know, formative feedback throughout the semester where we can make real time changes. This was truly summative at the end of the semester, at the end of the year, at the end of their four years um, at AU. But this was also um, valuable, as you'll see, for, for both faculty and students. So then part two was bringing this to um, our faculty. Oh, well, here, here, here's some pictures, right, of, uh, of our, of our post-it notes. We had over 100 um, comments. Students could do as many comments and provide as much feedback as they wanted. So many students took advantage and gave us lots of feedback. And so we grouped these, as you'll see here, into positive and detrimental, yeah. I was just gonna share. So what was helpful, I think, about the post-it notes in um, my capstone course was that it was anonymous in the way that they as a group could discuss it. But then if I asked for additional clarification, I also said, if you didn't write this post-it note, that's totally fine, but I'm reading this. Could I get a little bit more context? And then the whole class would share. So I guess you could, it's still anonymous, but then some students would say, oh yeah, that was me. I'm happy to share what my example was, right? So it's not forcing people to speak on behalf of their note. Um, and I also liked the opportunity for students to hear other students say, yeah, that happened to me too. Mm -hmm. And there's some type of validation being like, oh, this is not me perceiving it. It is actually a problem. Yeah, good point. Okay, so part two was our in faculty engagement. So this is where with our full faculty at our departmental annual retreat, we brought, we brought this process and uh, the feedback in May to our full faculty. And this was led by uh, Demonica Jones and Elizabeth Cotter, two faculty members in our department. And we worked in small groups to reflect and really discuss in a really meaningful way how some of these positive practices could be operationalized in our classroom and the detrimental practices minimized. So our goal here was really to elevate the student voices to build a more inclusive classroom environment. And this is what we're gonna do with you here now too. So we're gonna give you an opportunity um, to form into small groups. We're gonna spend about 20 minutes. Um, for those of you that are here, you can uh, form your own groups of about four to five people. Um, for those of you online, we'll put you into breakout rooms. And then we've got a prompt on this QR code that Ali um, put together for us, where you can discuss and how you, that, that's relevant in your departments, that's relevant, relevant in your classrooms, how these practices can be operationalized, how they can be um, the detrimental practices minimized, and maybe you have additional um, examples from your own experience as well. Then we'll ask for the groups to share out. We also have a form where you can keep track. One of you can be a note taker and you can keep track in real time online and we'll share that QR code yes. with you as well. Yeah. Um, so this is the QR code where once we uh, break you out into groups, we'll have, I think I have four, but if we have more groups, I'll just add another um, row in the document, but it's a Google doc. Let me know if you can't edit. I'm pretty sure I made that access available. And then also below it is for the breakout rooms online, which will make sure that that's happening and I can help with that too. Um, but go ahead and form, I don't know, into groups of four, I don't know. Three yeah, or four. we've got, that'll be a good about four or five groups. Yeah. We've got about five groups here. And you can um, kind of think about, as Melissa mentioned, things that are happening in your department, your unit, and um, what ways that you could um, support that, not necessarily just in the classroom, but also, you know, in any context with that AU. All right, you want to pull them up? Yep. Okay. So they can they can do that right there. Okay. Yeah. So we'll keep it on this page. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back as a larger group. We're going to give an opportunity for our online folks um, to share out anything that stood out to them in their conversations, something that maybe in your conversation you feel like really highlights um, an actionable item, either creating that positive um, classroom environment or minimizing the detrimental classroom practices that are happening. Um, so is anyone from the first online breakout group, do you want to share you have, and we'll pull up the active document that um, some folks had time, if you didn't have time to write in it, it's definitely okay, we just wanted an opportunity, if that was a learning style for you to um, share on the, um, on this Google Doc. So group one, do you online, do you want to, does anyone from your group want to share out something that you want to highlight? 
Yeah, it's Celeste. Hi. Um, hi. Hey. Hey. Um, so it was interesting. Our group had uh, mostly health studies folks. Um, it was Danielle, myself, Latoya, and then we had an incoming PhD student, Corbin. So welcome to AU. Um, but it was really good to have lots of different uh, feedback in our groups. So a lot um, really connected. And I think, you know, Latoya started the conversation about making students feel they belong. And a lot was like, when we talked about operationalizing it, it was really informal, right? Just checking in with students, reflecting back what you hear. Um, Corbin talked about, you know, a practice that we've talked about in our department is acknowledging stressful events that might be happening on campus or in the world. Um, and as a professor or faculty member, acknowledging it first before students have to bring it up I'm really letting students know that you're um, aware of things that might be impacting them. Um, Danielle also mentioned acknowledging that classroom material is hard and that right answers aren't required and kind of reducing that anxiety about how students even participate and show up in the classroom, um, really, really helpful. So I think ours was really about setting the tone um, and how you set the tone either across a semester or even just for the day and every day um, making sure students start off on, on the right foot. Um, to the, on the other side, it was focusing so much that you might lose instructional time um, and then not really creating a space at all for students to be vulnerable. And I think sometimes what happens there is we might feel so uncomfortable doing it that you kind of skim over it and just focus on the classwork. But in doing that, you also don't connect over the classwork because students now feel like I can't even talk to you um, about anything, and um, it, which is really important that students are able to do that. So that was our conversation. And Celeste, your comments are reminding me, even during our faculty meeting, we had talked about how um, when students walk into the classroom and it's really quiet and they feel a little bit uncomfortable, and um, we had shared like in my queering health class, I actually, every time they enter, we have a queer artist playing. And it's like, and the joke is I'm like DJ Chrysler, but it's like, it's a nice way for students to enter in. And it's funny because I actually acknowledge the students and I stopped doing it because I thought it might be silly. And they're like, what do you mean? We really liked it. So again, like it's creating, it could just be something so small like that, even having music playing when they enter the room. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks Celeste. Mm -hmm. How about group two, online group two? And you can just share if, you, if you'd if you like, even if you didn't get to fill it in and we can listen to some of your thoughts. Or group three, <laughs> or group four. <laughs> we can also move on to some in-class just because we only have about- Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have only about 10 minutes left. Our our in-person groups were active here. So why don't we give, give them a, an opportunity? I'm Does looking any, over at group one. Or any other group want to start us off? We've got a mic we can pass around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. Um, well, I actually wanted to reflect back on something that um, you just said about having like noise in the classroom or something going on in the classroom when students are walking in. One of our ideas was for the professor to make sure to get there early mm -hmm. and be present in the classroom, be able to engage with students as they're coming in um, to avoid that feeling of they're rushing or they're not preparing for class. The other component I also want to mention, like the flip side, is especially for some um, students where sensory, because that can be an overload. I do um, like to talk to students about offering that. And if it is too loud or distracting, that we can, you know, find a solution. I just, I was thinking of one specific example. Someone actually had experienced a concussion. So she actually came in with headphones. She's like, I don't want to not do it. I'm gonna wear headphones while we do it. So just just considering that component too. Another group. <laughs> Jane, thank you. Hi everybody, Jane Palmer from JLC. Um, I think what a lot of what we talked about is that students want to be seen as humans with lives outside your classroom, and they want you to be adaptable as needed. Uh, we also talked about considering 
the, the tone, not only, we talked about two things. The tone we said on the first day, like with the note cards, asking about pronouns and, you know, name they want to be called. And then any questions, like any concerns I have about the class, I teach research methods, so that part is always stats, <laughs> right? And I can tell like who are the stats anxious and who are the like, I've taken 17 stats, stats classes before. And I keep that pile of note cards next to my computer so that if any student emails me, I can be reminded of sort of like what I already know about them. And then I also ask like silly questions like what would you have in your unlimited vending machine so that they know that like, although I'm a stats professor, it's not all like numbers all the time. But we also talked about tone setting in the syllabus. And I'm having some conversations with faculty around like attendance policies. Like where's that line between like totally flexible attendance where I had a couple students last semester literally never come and some faculty who have mandated attendance where your grade is profoundly affected if you don't come, which I think is problematic in a pretty harsh role actually, says the JLC person. Um, and so I think it's really good to have these conversations because um, we are setting a tone and there's this balance between like playing a lot of getting to know you games like was said in one of the detrimental like don't play too many because you actually have content but also like forefronting well-being i'll say one more thing yeah. i got this from another faculty member i can't remember who to give them credit but um i build in a wellness day mm -hmm. like around midterms like we're not like uh, in advance we're not having class this day because i know you're going to be really stressed out and i don't want that in the classroom that energy affects everybody right just get, I mean, I can make jokes, obviously. And, um, but I tell them like, your well-being is really important. I mean, you guys are health studies and you probably do this kind of things too, but that's not really common criminology. Um, <laughs> and I really want you to use that time to study for midterms or don't. You send me a selfie in a garden, I'll give you extra credit, right? Like to really like emphasize, like they're not, they're just these machines that have to do statistical formulas. Thanks so much, Jane. You know, it's something that you said made me think also, you know, when we do a good job at setting the tone and creating opportunities to engage and vulnerability and wellness, like when we do a good job at that, there's also, we can't be all things to all people. So we also have to be able as faculty to rely on the campus resources and support to be able to connect our students, to be able to guide our students um, in areas that we may not have the expertise or that they may need additional support. And so just to familiarize ourselves, we're not alone <laughs> in this either. When students come to us and they really, when they really do, when we create those spaces to be able to connect them, to be able to have the university resources support all of our students as well. The tone setting, I also want to mention too, because students had mentioned to me that they don't like on the first day when faculty say about, like, kind of give a spiel about who they are. They're like, it's all, it's like, oh my God, they've done all these things and they're just boasting. And I said, well, on the flip side, what if a faculty member said, I'm going to share this so that maybe there's something in the past that I've done that you're interested in and I can make that connection for you. And I think setting that, that's like an example of like sh being more explicit about the tone, not being like, I'm trying, I'm like boasting. I'm literally just offering you connections. Any other groups want to share something that you discussed? Oh, Stacey said yeah, you should share. <laughs> Well, I think Stacy brought it up, and, um, and so I responded, but Stacy had shared that sometimes classes can lean a certain direction in terms of views, and so it's important to invite alternative views, and so everybody's not in agreement all the time, but it just helps us think critically, put ourselves in the, you know, in the place of somebody else, who might, and just make that invitation so the class is inclusive that way. Thank you. Does anyone want to make one last remark before we close out the session? Take it away, Melissa. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you all. I mean, I think I'll just end that, you know, there's no singular sort of learning environment. Every classroom experience is going to be unique and diverse and, you know, and it takes a lot of strategy. So hopefully we have our toolkit and some of these strategies are you know, pretty simple to implement. I know that this time of year, it can really feel overwhelming with all of the things that we're learning and we're trying to put into our syllabus. 
um, in the next two weeks. So, you know, we can we can go slowly and take some of these um, strategies and tools in our toolkit to, to learn to apply to each of our individual classrooms and just setting that positive tone and starting off um, on that first first class and through our syllabus um, really, really helps with our community building activities. So wishing you all the best in the start of the semester and the in the new year. We also want to make sure that we bring up um, the slide where you can do your evaluation. Yeah. Okay. Let me do that. Let me do that. Um, that right here, is, right here. here we go. Perfect. Okay. That's for CTR. Yep, yeah. This is for the CTR. Please fill it out when you have a chance. And we just want to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.